Dad, wake up! <sighs> Hi, this is Mick Make Mail number 13 with even more cool stuff. P.S. This is not a deja vu. Huh? Mom, he's doing it again! So this mailbag, we're taking a look at this, 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 and this. So this board was a Kickstarter that was about a year ago, so it's been that long, it's been sitting on my shelf. You can also get it from Tindy these days. Uh, he's got a website with a bunch of examples and tutorials on there, so that's quite handy. So I was going to do a full review of the Wii Thumb, but I don't think I need to really. The Wii Thumb has an onboard ESP8266 as well as a CP2104 USB to serial port so you can just chuck straight into a USB uh, that's the CP2104 I think on the back uh, it also has an MPU650 6DOF IMU and also an MCP9808 temperature sensor so they're fairly common uh, components you can get you can program it using Arduino ID or of course Node MCU I don't particularly like Node MCU, but that's just my personal opinion. So let's give it a, a whirl and see how it goes. So it's got a fairly simple tutorial up on instructables.com, which just pushes data to SparkFun's data service, which is a fairly simple application that all it does is just read the temperature sensor and push the results to data.sparkfun.com. So that's all fairly trivial to set up. And there you have it. That's pretty simple. It's also got a couple of GPIO breakouts that you can use. Um, I didn't bother testing that. Uh, it's fairly straightforward. All it's doing is pushing out the pins from the ESP. I would assume it would all work. So there we go. Uh, what's next on the list? So another one from a very old Mick Make Mail segment, which was Mick Make Mail number two, I think, uh, were these dust sensors. So I've got two modules, one which is a cheaper LED-based dust sensor uh, which is this one I think it is and a more expensive one which is a laser based module the laser based module has a fan on it so it pulls dust in and the cheaper version has just a, a plain LED there's no fan to pull dust in so let's fire these up and see how they go okay so the problem is um, with this particular PCB is that it's so old um, there's no schematics there's no information online and the only information has different colors and different pinouts for these connectors so to avoid making the same mistake as I did with the touch sensor I'm going to properly figure out these connections so from a good a general guide is you look at the biggest track and they're probably going to be the ground or power lines um, another thing you can look at this cap is um, has a negative and a positive so this negative side here will of course go to ground uh, which ends up being this point here and it's also uh, connected to the, the body or the, the metal of this particular unit so tracing this around we end up uh, getting to this one so this is ground I'm pretty sure this one is ground uh, then the next important signal is the power. Now this board also has an LED on it um, so it's got anode and cathode um, and you can see this one the cathode goes all the way to the ground ground point so that's fine and fortunately this one always powers up the LED the other side which is going to be the voltage in um, you can trace this down which goes through this area and this is just a zero ohm resistor for some reason down through here and ends up being at this point so that's ground and that's VCC so they're the two important things that we need to get right uh, and then I need to figure out these other other wires so I checked this IC online it's an A60265 IC I couldn't find anything you know, online so I'm fairly confident that those two lines, the yellow and green are power, uh, ground and power. So I'll wire it up and see how we go. So what I've done here is I've connected up uh, everything, uh, the module, the dust sensor module to the 5 volt and ground line on an Arduino 
Leonardo and I'm going to probe along these three connections here and figure out what they do. I note that this particular module is supposed to send pulses out based on how much dust it can sense. There's two lines that do that so let's actually figure out which ones they are out of those three. Okay so I've set the crow into single shot mode so as soon as it sees a uh, rising or a falling edge it'll trigger off and I've connected it to the white connector on this particular cable, I don't know what it is. So um, I think we just blow a bit of dust into it. Okay, so uh, it looks like white. We've seen a pulse out of that. Okay, so that's one of the one of the pulse lines. Then let's move it to the middle. Reset the crow. Okay, we're getting another pulse out of that second one, which is uh, the black wire for some strange reason. Let's move it to the third position. Reset the crow. Okay, looks like blowing on the sensor, we're not getting anything out. So the white and the black uh, cables on this particular sensor are the outputs. So let's get some code going on this Arduino and see if we can sense something. So in terms of source code, there's bucket loads around. Uh, I just picked this one up off the, the web. And if you actually look at all of the different versions, this is the most important bit of the source code which does all the calculations for you. So I've connected it up to uh, pin 8, uh, same as the source code. So whenever a bit of dust appears within the sensor it'll send a pulse width out uh, to two control lines and, and that's connected to GPIO 8 of the Arduino. I don't know which control line is which but one of them is a straight connection, the other one is a connection that you can adjust the sensitivity of it. Okay so blowing on it seems to just produce a nice little uh, parts per million count. Now I'm not sure how accurate that is really. I don't have any way of testing that. So um, but at least it seems to be coming back with something. So yeah the connections seem to be absolutely correct for once which is a surprise but it's just flipped around the other way so uh, once again QA. So these little modules actually have little heaters on them. You can actually feel the heater is just a plain low resistance resistor. You can feel it on the side, There's, it's getting quite warm. So let's try out the laser sensor this time. So the connector on this particular sensor is, has these very tiny connectors so I'm just going to take these off, you know, remove these and solder on something I can actually connect to. So I'm connecting up to a Raspberry Pi because it gives me a nice little TCL based UART. Uh, we'll fire up and see what I can see. Okay, so I'm not getting any response out of this, this laser dust sensor. So I think they've probably got it around the wrong way again. Um, so time to crack this open and see how it's all connected up inside. Looks like the back is stuck down. Just try to get this off without actually destroying it if I can. And the front, I think it just all slides off once you've got that off. Uh, then a bunch of screws. Okay, so it's a fairly complete unit. The fan sucking air in uh, into this little sort of cavity. And this is where the, the magic happens. The, you've got a, a strong laser diode, which apparently can only handle up to 5,000 hours. So it's a sensor that you don't really want to have running all the time. Um, and this is the, the sensor you've got here. Now, interestingly enough, uh, there's a Cortex-M0 MCU here, which is a Cypress Pine 4246, I think it is. It'd be nice to be able to break into this so you can actually uh, attach a Wi-Fi module or something. Uh, then you can have everything all self-contained in, in this little box, which I might actually look at doing. So let's find out if my assumption was correct and the 5 volt and ground was connected up properly. Alright, so I've looked at the data sheet. Uh, pin 28 of this package is actually ground and pin 27 is VCC. So all I have to do is buzz it out. Okay, so this one should be ground. 
which is correct. And this is a 5 volt to 3.3 volt converter. The middle pin's ground, which is correct. Um, and one of the outer ones, I can't remember which, should be the 5 volts. So it's that one, yep. So it seems it's wired up correctly, um, but just nothing's happening. So once again, what they've done is they've wired it around incorrectly. So you can see that the cable goes like this. It should be like this. It's all wired up correctly now with VCC, ground, transmit, receive, and so forth. So let's fire this up and see how it goes. Now this is a good sign. I can actually see the, um, the little fan running now. I've connected pin 3 of this module to VCC which means it'll be in continuous scanning mode. So this is good, the fan's working. Okay, so for some reason I'm not getting any response out of this serial port uh, for some reason and I don't know what's going on but I was certainly getting uh, a response from the Arduino. So I've even connected it up to my handy dandy logic analyzer. Uh, which is uh, one of the Banggood purchases uh, and I'm not getting any result at all which is a bit of a shame so I don't know why um, Arduino certainly works the Raspberry Pi this particular software doesn't seem to work on uh, Python code so while we're on the subject of this analyzer uh, I might as well give you a quick review on this as well so this particular one came from Banggood uh, it's one of the cheap Chinese jobs uh, it's got eight channels. It can handle 16 mega samples per second. Now it's got two analog input. Now with this you also get a, a bag of little connecty things um, and also a lot of cables but I've actually used them for other purposes. Um, so these are fairly simple uh, connecty thingies. They're not particularly reliable. Uh, they're a little bit dodgy but anyway uh, they seem to do the job. I never actually managed to get the software going on the Windows PC because it was a bit of a dodgy. It asks you to put in a, a serial cracking key for commercial software, and I really don't like supporting uh, cracking software. I know a lot of you do, but that's that's fine. What you want to do, it's fine. But personally, I don't uh, condone uh, cracking software. I prefer to actually buy the software if I need to use it. So anyway, uh, there's free software that you can use, uh, which is. Uh, I'm using on Linux which is called Pulse View. As soon as you connect it up then it'll appear and then you can just uh, select the C-Wave uh, device that's come up on the USB list. Let's test it out on this uh, dust sensor and um, see what sort of results we can get. So connect up uh, ground first uh, to that pin then connect up uh, TX. This is a straight serial connection so I should see um, some nice data coming out. Okay, so I've got it on those two. So RX and TX and I've got ground connected up. Let's fire up the software. Okay so plugging it in the Arduino should query the dust sensor across the serial bus. Let's run a uh, sample and because it's 9600 board uh, we'll have to up the sample rate to say 2 megahertz. We shouldn't need that but 2 megahertz and we'll run it for about 5 mega samples so it'll give us about two and a half seconds. The good thing with pulse view is you can actually decode some of the data that's coming in so it's got a, a nice little UART feature uh, that you can select and you can tie the TX and RX pins to a particular pin that you've connected on the um, logic analyzer. Don't forget to set the board rate, this is running at 9600 board uh, otherwise you'll get funny sort of decoding errors and uh, wait for a while and there you go it's decoding all the data so that's about it for this mailbag um, thanks for watching